I want to tell you here about the Swiss Torture Trio and the real top of the Nazi Templars from Octagon, Switzerland, who were in charge of the ones in control, bearing, res bearing responsibility for the terrible crimes committed against humanity of World War II and inside and around the concentration camps, all made possible through Switzerland, who were the real organizers of it all. And they were all Swiss, all three of them. Besides the facts that Hitler got financed in Switzerland by the Swiss general Ulrich Wille von Bismarck, Rudolf Hess studying in Zurich, and Dr. Mengele being an Alemannic ethnic Swiss, being totally protected by the motherland in the Alps, which already discussed in previous films. There were far more Swiss involved in organizing the Nazi crimes. And it's a terrible mistake to just say that Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, was the sole top responsible for the concentration camps, who in reality was only responsible for the security, military aspect with all the horrors his SS butchers inflicted on defenseless people and even on children. And Himmler was also Alemannic, ethnic, Swiss, and even aristocratic of the Nazi Templars of Octagon, which I will prove in a minute. It's always Switzerland and the aristocracy. Number one of the Swiss tormentor Templar trio was the Nazi Reichsminister and SS Arbeitgruppenführer. Leonardo Conte, originally from Switzerland and responsible for the political and medical side of Auschwitz, the concentration camps and the T4 operation. And yes, he was a doctor, supposed to help people by the Hippocratic Oath and I already made a video about him. Well, there he is, SS Obergruppenführer. Uh, Dr. Leonardo Conte, he was born on August 24th, 1900 in Lugano, Switzerland. There he is, from Switzerland. He was the man, one of the three responsible for, of the Tormentor Trio. And number two of the top responsibles from Switzerland of the Swiss Teufelstrio was Professor Ernst Rudin. Born in St. Gallen with the fascist symbol in their coat of arms on April 19th, 1874. And he was responsible for the idea as being Hitler's mastermind of the genocide and the world's father of eugenics, where eugenics is a closed Nazi-related teaching, dividing mankind into two groups, only the ones worth living and the ones better to be wasted. Eugenics always starts with psychiatry, witch hunts, forced sterilizations and backed up by Nazi politics, and eugenics always ends up with genocides and industrialized mass murder. Just as we can see it progressing in Nazi Switzerland today in 2014, where eugenics is such a fine typical Swiss concept to begin with. Here we can see it, it was in the newspaper a few days ago, there was uh, October the 8th, 2014. And renitent, and uh, this means as uh, asylum seekers, lager, concentrationslager. You know that means a concentration camp. And renitent, that means uh, Swissy is going to um, <clears throat> is going to uh, tell you uh, who is going. You know, if you don't obey the Swiss, you're going into a uh, concentration camp, and they already built them three concentration camps 
and the standards for going in there, you know, first are you going to be low? It's the same thing as in the 30s, you know, in Germany. And uh, you just go in there, you know, for, for nothing, really. Only if you don't like your face or... And then the standards and the criteria for, you know, for getting in there, you know, they're getting lower and lower and lower. In the end, it's, uh, it's another genocide coming up and they're working on it. It's always been a Swiss idea and nobody is doing anything. Well, anyway, the Swiss are the killers for the aristocracy. You know, they've always been that, you know. The Swiss mercenaries, the, uh, it's octagon, it's eight, Switzerland, octagon. The Pope's guard, they're the killers for the aristocracy. The Einsatzgruppen, the wave of killers, you know, coming after the, uh, the German army, killing everybody. It's so typical Swiss. It's not typical German. Three Swissies of the infernal trio giving the orders. One on the medical and political level, one for the idea and conception, and one for the executive. Leonardo Conti, Ernst Rudin and Heinrich Himmler. So, Leonardo Conti for the medical and political level, Ernst Rudin for the idea and conception, Heinrich Himmel, Himmler for the executive. And before, we already had Swiss Wille, Ulrich Wille in Zurich for the finances, and Swiss Mengele for the execution of the experiments, and all backed up by the motherland. Rudin studied in Geneva, Lausanne and Zurich between 1893 and 1898 and his name is from the German Rude, meaning a male dog or a hound and Rudin meaning a bitch. He even used as such in the coat of arms of various aristocratic per a lineages in Switzerland such as Rudin von Lausen as you can see here with the bitch in it. All showing these werewolf sort of creatures of the Swiss aristocracy in creepy octagon. And here you can see the three things for Isis, Horus and Seth, the uh, holy trinity of the aristocracy and the pharaohs. And as shown here, Ernst Rudin is a full-blooded member of the aristocracy. And in fact, they all are. Well, these are the ones who have always been doing these horrible things to humanity, and they never stop doing so. And here it says Ramlinsburg, and Ramlik, that means on, uh, on heat, you know, as in the Prime Noctis, yeah? Rudin, the bitches on heat. See my film, Fairistocracy, in which I show the nobility's tradition of torture, slavery, murder, prime noctis, child raping, satanic rituals from Egypt, you name it. I mean, look at history. Who has been always doing this throughout history? There's only one answer. The aristocracy. There's only one answer. And here, another Rudin, or bitch of the aristocracy, so closely related to the Prime Noctis, where they've been injecting their pharaonic genetics into the European peoples. And another one, the three for Isis, Horus and Seth, which is the Horus Matrix. And Rudin, it stands for the Prime Noctis. And here it says Rudin, that's, that's the name, and in, 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 you know, in the Middle Ages, the umlaut, it, it disappeared, you know, a lot of times, you know, the, the two dots here. But it's the same name. This is, his, this is his genealogy. And the aristocracy have always been torturing and doing bad things to humanity and the Europeans. So it's no wonder that this um, satanic devilish doctor of Sw from Switzerland, from the concentration camps and the, um, the eugenics, that he is that he is part of the um, the aristocracy, or rather say the fairistocracy. And another one you can sh 
clearly see this werewolf bitch here with the nose here and the ears and at the same time it's an axe and here another Rudin or Rudin with the uh, Fleur de Lis and of course the Fleur de Lis is not only the Nile's uh, lotus but it's also the three things here they're tied together here you see this is Isis, Horus and Seth well this one is probably Seth yeah, Isis and Horus the Horus Matrix. That's the way they wage the wars, you know. Kill the man and take the women. It's so simple. Wakey wakey. Dr. Mengele from Auschwitz, or Dr. Death, was Ernst Rudin's subordinate. And just as Mengele, Rudin experimented on people doing cryogenics and see how long a person could survive in icy cold water. And of course, four sterilizations using cryogenics or ice. It's all from Switzerland. Mengele, Ernst Rudin, the whole idea, the whole, the whole thing, you know. Here it says, Ernst Rudin, Dr. Mengele was Ernst Rudin's subordinate. He was his chief, you know, he was take. well, he didn't have to take any orders. It was, you know, it was his own free will, you know. It's all over. It's all Swiss. It's a Swiss tormentors trio. Himmler, Rudin, Conti, and here's Mengele. This is the base of evil, believe me. It's in uh, Wikipedia in English, but there isn't very much. In German there's a lot more. He was. It says he was a Swiss psychiatrist, geneticist, and geneticist. Uh, Eugenicist. Rudin was born in St. Gallen, Switzerland. I just showed that to you in 1874. He's the father of racial hygienics, hygiene. Um, it says he's a Nazi expert. I'll show you the German one now. So here's the German Wikipedia, and this is interesting here. It says uh, for the the German Luftwaffe, the Air Force, you know, it's cold up there, and sometimes they land into the water. It's min minus zero. Um, uh, it's freezing in the air. So he was interested, and there's no oxygen. So he did mention Versuchen, that means exper experimentations, experiments on human beings. Considering Sauerstoffmangel, that means uh, oxygen deprivation. And they're still torturing people here in Switzerland. This is code O2T. And it has been done with the plastic bags, uh, you know, the order of the, um, of the solar temple. You know, they're so obsessed with this, the Swissies are. So the Swiss, Rudin, was highly interested in human experimenting, considering oxygen deprivation together with Fritz Röder and this is of course O2T torture which is a Swiss speciality. The Swiss Rudin often came to the concentration camps to collect some human material for his experiments and he peacefully died on October 22nd 1952 without ever having any problems with the authorities for his crimes. And he's still highly respected in the motherland in the Alps. Just as many of the Swiss SS as Hauptsturmführer Franz Riedweg and SS Hauptsturmführer Dr. Kurt Brüderlin, still honored by the Avalon Order, a Swiss Nazi organization specialized in developing the idea of Islamofascism into the Arab world. Well, there are so many of them, I, I just can't show them all. You know, I, sh I showed just a couple of them. So, so this is another doctor, you see. Well, we, you know, they, 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 it's completely laws of silence here. It's the Omerta of the biggest mafia in the world, the Swiss Nazi mafia. And, um, well, you never get a word out, you know. Well, I did, actually. So. 
So this is their website and they came and visited me once. The first time with five guys and the second time with six and we had to escape. And because I escaped they put me in prison again. They all work together here, you know. They're all smiling and we say, well, we're so neutral, you know. But, oh boy, the thing's going on here. So here it says, Avalon. This is the Avalon portrait. The Avalon order or community. Well, you can look it up yourself, you know. Yeah, there they are. Avalon. Well, it looks nice, you know, it looks like Celtic, but it isn't. Oh, well, there he is. Franz Riedweg, a high officer in the SS. And here it says again, you know, he's uh, the most influential Swiss in Nazi Germany. Well, I mean, the other ones were already uh, quite influential, you know. And he was in a, sp a special military, military unit which served Adolf Hitler personal guard entrusted with extensive power and authority. Um, well, I mean, you can see the Swiss, the, the, the Germans were just the uh, the soldiers more like, but the head, you know, all the guys are really the mind, the mastermind behind it all, they're Swiss. Yeah, the Swiss was entrusted with organizing the recruitment and political education of Waffen SS volunteers. You know, just as the Swiss had the Germans volunteer. They are they are the mastermind behind it all. And there's so many. I mean, I can't even show them all to you. I'm going to read the whole article here. Just punch pause. And they just lived on, you know, and then continue to do their things in Switzerland but maybe this guy was there as well you know when they when they came and threatened me I mean he's related with these uh, with this other Huber guy you know just like gay Edgar Huber of the the Evelyn community I tell you I've been living hell here like 17 years just Nazi Swiss Nazi hell and even the Swiss who you know who, um, who pretend to be otherwise, well they're not, they're all a bunch of Nazis really. There's no left wing, there's nothing, they, they all lie through their teeth, I tell you. They're all in favour of Nazism, Fascism, e Eugenics, or well, you name it. There's not very much in English, you know, but here it says he was Franz Riedweg, he was born in 1907 in Luzerne. That's where I filmed the uh, the German helmet, remember, in Luzerne. That's where the, the Nazi red line, where they passed by. Uh, he was there, I tell you, you know. It says, he knew Joseph Goebbels, he knew Himmler, well, he was Swiss anyway. All of them, he knew them all. Hitler, I mean, he, he was a doctor. He was even a doctor, they're all doctors and... Torturing people. Switzerland is the mastermind. They masterminded World War Two, and the concentration camps, the murder on Germans, on on Jews, on everyone. It's all Swiss. Oh, yeah, it says he was even an SS Obersturmbannführer. That's even higher. It's almost like a general, probably or something. And he died quite. He almost got a hundred years. You know. A hundred years of, of wasted life, you know, I'd say, you know. 98 years old, and he died peacefully in Munich. Just like the other one, just like Ernst Rudin, he also died in Munich. Oh, man. The T4, or Tiergarten 4, human experimenting program and sterilization facility of the Swiss eugenicists Ernst Rudin, and Leonardo Conti actually stands for Templar IV. Well, here he is. This is Leonardo Conti. Oh, you can read the whole story. It was in Spiegel, German magazine. So the T4, it actually stands for Templar IV, with four 
of the base of the pyramid and power structure, meaning the common people, as in the relation to the inner circle six of the Masons, defended by eight for octagon. I explained this in this video. I have it in English too somewhere. And here's the six, which is the inner circle, and like the um, the square and the compass. And they are defended by the eight, octagon, the military wing. And we are number four, like T4. We can be wasted, it doesn't matter, like on the battlefield or as cannon fodder or for human experi experimentations, experiments. So this is the base of the, of the pyramid. So this is four, eight and six. Remember that number, you see it a lot. Yes, there are indeed two very different types of fascism. Fascism for the poor, the soldiers, the, the masses, and fascism for the rich, the nobility, Switzerland, and the financial elite, where Germany mostly represented fascism for the poor, and Switzerland fascism for the rich, the mastermind. The third of the Swiss Teufelstrio is Heinrich Himmler. Here he is, Heinrich Himmler. And this is Amin al Husseini, the head of Islamo fascism and the, uh, the Hanjar Muslim division. So, Heinrich Himmler, he was the head of the SS. He was born on October 7th, 9, uh, 1900, in Munich the south of Germany, and both his parents were Alemannic ethnic Swiss, and this also explains it why the Swiss with François, François Genou and Ahmed Al Huber, Huber Al Swissri, uh, the guy from the Avalon thing, how they continue to, to, to work on Islamofascism together with the Swiss banks, again, to finance this guy here and uh, Islamofascism because this guy is Swiss it's all from Switzerland his father Gebhard Himmler was born at the Swiss border within the Alemannic area of the ethnic Swiss in the German town of Lindau on May 17 1865 and his mother, also born at the Swiss border, within the Alemannic area of ethnic Swiss, but in Austria, in the town of Bregenz. And her maiden name was Haider, like Jörg Haider of the Austrian Nazi party. It's just one big family, you know. Only Haider was written uh, with an E instead of an A, but it's, it's, it's all the same, you know. So I show it to you here in German actually, because in, in the English um, Wikipedia it doesn't show. So here it says, his father, Gebhard Himmler, he was born in Lindau. I'm going to show you in a moment where that is. And his mother, Anna Maria Haida, was born in Bregenz. So I'll show you now where that is. So here's Lindau in Wikipedia, here it is, right at the Swiss border. That's where his father is from. Again Wikipedia, and his mother is from here, in Bregenz, in Austria, right at the Swiss border. So here you can see, these are all ethnic Swiss, this is Alemannisch, or Alemannic. So here is about, here this is about Switzerland here. And here you can see Bregenz, well they write in, in their different form, you know. So this is where the, uh, the mother of Himmler got born, in the middle, in the middle of the Alem uh, ethnic Swiss area. And Lindau, it's about here. And later on they moved to, um, to a place about here, on, on the Rhine, Landshut. It's about here, I think. So right in the middle. Uh, there's even a big chunk of Italy, a big chunk of Austria here, and even Bavaria. That, that, and this is why most of those uh, SS and Nazi uh, camp commandant, they all came from, you know, the ones who came from Bavaria. Well, 
it, it is all ethnic Swiss really, it's all Alemannic. And well, they are the ones behind it. So this is where he's from, uh, Mr. Himmler. This is Swiss. Yeah. Yeah. And they're even actually discussing it, you know. So this is uh, July the 30th, 2014. That was this year. And they're talking about the, um, the empire Switzerland. Großmacht Schweiz. I already showed you parts of this in my film about uh, Mengele and how he was protected in Switzerland. Uh, I showed you some other maps. Maybe you can have a look at it. It's in the, uh, in the links. So even the OECD, uh, well that's in German, they call it a bit differently in English. Uh, they even say that Bavaria here and, and Baden-Württemberg of course, they, uh, they fit much better to, uh, to Switzerland. I mean, this is why all the, you know, all the, the camp commandants, you know, of the concentration camps, they all, you know, most of them, a lot of them, they came from Bavaria. They are ethnic Swiss, and a, 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 a huge chunk of Bavaria, it's Alemannic, you see. So this is the, the new Swiss Empire, you know, with here the um, Bavaria, and this is Baden-Württemberg, and they're actually talking about it. I, I, I talked with two different Swiss Nazis a long time ago, and they already told me this, like 10 years ago. So they're really working on it. Um, I mean, this fits into what I'm telling you. Well, this explains why almost all the top Nazis, Nazi doctors and camp commandants came from the south of Germany, mostly next to the motherland in the Alps. And they're all related to the aristocracy as well. So here again, this is the, uh, the the Lake Boden, Bodensee. Here's Lindau, his father is from here. Here's Bregenz, his mother. And this is all in the middle of the Alemannic tribal area. And and uh, as you could see, uh, it still lives, as is, you know, even in the newspaper today or this year. And here's Waldshut, also on, at the Swiss border. This is Switzerland here. So this is going to be the Swiss Empire, and, and they're working on it, guys. So all these hundreds of years, Swissies, you know, they have been murdering the people just, you know, over the borders, like during the Thirty Year War, but it still stayed like Germany. But now it seems they're going, um, they're going to show their real face, their real ugly uh, face of, of whom they really are. And um, you can see here Gunzburg, that was Mengele, was from here. Bregenz, there's Himmler around here. They're all from here. St. Gallen, there's Dr. Dr. Ernst Rüden, he's from here. Um, yeah, there, there's, there's a, a strategy behind it. You know, and through this, you know, by, this is France. It still is France, it's Elsass. And through the, and this is it's part of Italy here, and through this they could you know um, infect France through this area and take key positions in Paris because this is France, you know if you're in politics you can go from here and you go to Paris you know the same thing here in Germany or in Austria here you can take over control in Vienna, or you can take over control in Berlin through this here. If you're organized enough, and they did the same thing in, in the United States, in the Swiss belt. I already showed you this. So it, it seems to be, that, you know, we're heading for a big chaos. And that's why, and they know it, that's why they, all their people, they're going, they're taking them home like in, in one Swiss empire. And it is a bit bigger than this actually. Well, this is also Switzerland. Um... Bad things are going to happen. <clears throat> and because these guys are sort of German, sort of, 
you won't find very much in English uh, about this in the English Wikipedia. And here it's, but here it says the prince uh, was raised Erzogen by Gebhard Himmler, the father of Heinrich Himmler. And later on, he became the uh, something with the baptism uh, of Heinrich Himmler. And here it says his mother is Prinzessin von und zu Liechtenstein. And his father, Prince Arnold von Bayern. You see? And this is very, very important. So, you, you see the, uh, the, um, the aristocracy got their fingers in it again. It's always Switzerland and the aristocracy. I think this is the father of that princess. So Liechtenstein means the stone of light, as in Illuminati or light bearer, and is basically a part of Switzerland. Or maybe Switzerland is a part of Liechtenstein, who knows. And they're using the Swiss franc and they're tightly ruled by the prince of Liechtenstein until this very day, 2014. It's still the same. There, the aristocracy is still, well, they're ruling everywhere, but I mean, you yeah. know. Now, why do you think Heinrich Himmler got raised together with the upper aristocracy if he wouldn't have had the blue blood of the pharaohs running through his veins? This is probably why he looks like Emperor Hirohito, another pair A of the pharaonic bloodlines and warmonger on the other side of the globe. And Japan has always been dominated by the pharaonic aristocracy of emperors and shoguns for the six inner circle and samurais for the eight military wing with their all pharaoh Bushido devotion. My advice is, don't you ever put anyone else above yourself. I mean, the uh, the aristocracy never really mingles with other people, you know, so why would they do with this little nothing Heinrich Himmler? He's one of them. And he looks, this is the same, this is the same bloodline, you know, the same, they even, they even look alike, they look the same, but that's not all. They have the same, they have the same look at their face, you know, the same cold uh, radiation, you know, it's, uh, it's the same bloodline. It's all pharaonic, believe me. You know, he looks like a Jap, doesn't he? He's got the V of the Templars here, see? And you, got the, it, you, you get the same feeling by looking at Himmler or looking at Hirohito, it's like... It's it's the same Swiss face, you know. Like it, if you, if you knock on it, like somebody there, you know, it, it, it doesn't even look if there's really somebody there. There's no emotion, and it's so typical Swiss, you know. Oh, uh, you know, octagon rules the world. I tell you, maybe somebody can make a comparison and put them all together, you know, next to each other. We can have a look. I don't know how to do that, but this is the same lineage. I mean, that's for sure. I mean, you could easily fool the Japs, you know, by, uh, well, the Hirohito is dead now. <laughs> but, you know, like before, like putting this one in the uniform of Mr. Hir Hirohito, and they wouldn't even notice, because they were not even allowed to look at the at the bugger anyway, you know. It's the same, same bloodline. I mean, these are the ones we're looking for. They are all over the world. They're a bunch of parasites. Parasites, they think there's something more than we, they don't even talk to us, you know, they only, they only mix with each other, like we are some sort of a lower species, um, and they even look alike, you know, even if one of them is German, or supposed to be sort of German, or Swiss German, and the other one is a Jap, they even look alike, because they are neither a Jap or a German. Now, this is octagon, it's pharaonic. That's why. So, if people believe, you know, it's like some other people, like the Jews or who are supposed to be everywhere, well, 
These are the ones, the aristocracy, these are the ones who are everywhere. And this is also Hitler's secret that through his grandfather, Frankenberger, he was a member of the German nobility and therefore had all the original workers' leaders of the original German National Socialist Workers' Party all murdered in the Night of the Long Knives in 1934 and replaced them with the nobility, turning this Workers' Party by the German people into an elitist party. Yes, I told you, there's fascism by the poor and fascism by the rich, and they're not necessarily friends. Hitler didn't give a damn about Germany or the Germanic race. He despised the Germans, really, and Aryan is just another name for aristocrat. Ari, born from the sun. Or do you think some arist aristocrat would be running around with a spade over his neck, you know, marching with a shovel? No, not really, eh? Well, this is Nazism or fascism for the poor, and the other picture just before was fascism for the rich, yeah? And if there's any girlies who want to hop along, well, they can do it like this, with this instrument here, like a peasant. And then there are these, the aristocratic Nazis, and you hardly see them bouncing around over a field with a shovel, eh? One of the goals of the aristocracy was to crush communism because of the Tsars and the communists uh, abolishing the church, the Vatican and the nobility. This is why the Swiss Octogon, as Karl Jäger of the Jäger Report, and the nobility formed a wave of Einsatzgruppen like Battalion 322 to murder all the civilians and they came as a wave after the... Um, after the German army. Yes, 322, as in the dark US order of Skull and Bones where they speak Swiss German and like the SS have the Skull and Bones with SS standing for Isis as in Pharaonic Demotic only consonants are written SS. Here it is, 322, like the, uh, the murder battalion 322. The three top responsibles of Auschwitz were Swiss Leonardo Conti, Heinrich Himmler and Ernst Rudin. And the real parasites in the evil Swiss setup were not the Jews but the nobility who have a long tradition together with the church to live and parasite on other man's cost, just as the Swiss, their banks and their tax evasion. It was in fact the nobility the king and lords who invented the tax system of feudalism in the first place. And nothing has changed really, only that they're hiding behind the new world order system of all those mason politicians of the very same nobility, which used to be the old world order of feudalism. It's still the same thing. And even Field Marshal Hermann Göring was nobility with the official title of Ritter von Eppenstein of the Feldenstein Castle near Nuremberg. And his father was the German Governor General of South West Africa, also called the King of Namibia. And it's only the nobility meeting the nobility. So he met Count Erich von Rosen in 1920 in Stockholm, where he saw the swastika in the castle and finally married his sister-in-law, Baroness Karin von Kansov. Well, nobility always marries nobility, even if it doesn't seem so. So how was this uh, Göring saw on the, uh, on the castle? And this is the castle. And there were more things, more swastikas like here. And this is because the uh, because of the Viking connection, the Haunabu with the uh, with the pharaohs. And I also showed you in another film that this is pharaonic. So through the pharaohs, 
the whole nobility took this here. And why a swastika in a castle? Well, I showed you here in this video how the swastika derives from a pyramid, just as the whole aristocratic bunch does. And don't you believe that von Stauffenberg tried to bomb Hitler on July 20th, 1944? No aristocrat would do so. And I also showed a part of this uh, video here in Octagon, the Empire of Darkness. But not the entire bit here. You have to see this one here on, on uh, the same channel. Hatze Fratz. And also Göring's daughter, Edda, who you can see here as a baby, was named, was named after Countess Edda of Castellazio and Bulgari, which was Mussolini's daughter, another aristocrat. And Mussolini had lived in Switzerland for several years and even officially immigrated to Switzerland in 1902, living in Geneva, Lausanne and Bern. Well, they all were in Switzerland, weren't they now? Switzerland is the base of the nobility where they go skiing, own a chalet or two, hide their money and organize fascism against the Europeans. And of course, Goering, Himmler, Hitler, Goebbels and the rest of these Swiss aristocrats didn't die in 1945. Well, General Eisenhower was a Swiss, remember? The Swiss trio from hell, from the Alps. Ernst Rudin, Leonardo Conti and Heinrich Himmler were the top responsibles for the concentration camps human experiments, genocide, torture and mass murder. Swiss always has their dirty little fingers in it. Octagon in the Alps is the base of all evil, where all thugs of the world meet up with filth from the Alps. World War II and the concentration camps were definitely made in Switzerland. 